something strange had happened. And as you can see, this is fairly strange. Has anyone seen one of these? Well, there's a lot of people that have. Maybe not in this room, but I've had thousands of emails with hundreds of people who have described this who have never seen the picture. Letters that have been sent to the, our post office box where people have no computer that have made drawings of this before they really knew what it looked like. So there are people who have seen this before. So I drove home. I got in my car and I drove home, stopping to get sick along the way, stopping to make sure that I was not completely out of my mind, which from time to time I felt I was. I stopped at a ranger station on the way home. There was no one there. And I kept going, and I got home, and I drove in my carport, and I sat there for a long time thinking about this could not have happened. This could not be going on. It had to be some kind of illusion. Now, that in itself is a very small piece of this puzzle that I have been through. People have said, gee, I wish I had that experience. Well, I'll tell you, I'd trade places with you any time. Because since that day, my life is gone. Everything that I knew prior to that is gone. My job my friends, my bank account, my social security number, everything. And why? Because I saw something? Because I didn't turn it over to somebody who told me to turn it over? Because people came to my house and said, you didn't see anything, Jonathan. And if you have anything, you best give it to us because the next people that come won't be so kind. And I told them to get out of my house. And I said, I'm gonna call the police. They said, go ahead, they're with us. And they were, they were sitting out in front of my house. Now this is a hard lesson to take. I was brought up to believe different things happen in this country. But my rights have been totally taken away from me. And all I ask is that people open their minds and understand that this stuff may be going on to some of us. Maybe not you, maybe not your neighbor, but I know it's going on to hundreds of people in this country and other countries. I know there is a very dark force that is suppressing this information. I know that there is a lot of information that a few of us, not me, I know very little. But there are a few people who know a great deal and we need to listen to them. And we need to realize that not everything that we've always been told is true. And that not everyone who stands in this room stands for the truth and the freedom of information. And there are a couple of people in this room that I know that work for the government, that posture as normal people, that stand there and try to emulate one of the rest of us. And those people know who they are, don't they? 
but we need to realize this. Now, uh, one of our, one of the guys that Jonathan met, a very, uh, who's, who's actually managed on the website, Cole, um, the OdysseyLink.net site, happened to, uh, about a month before their March presentation in Laughlin, happened to be going through the tape again, and uh, he's the one who actually saw the blinking. Jonathan never saw it initially. In fact, in their first presentation in San Diego, they never mentioned it because they didn't notice it. And the reason he didn't notice it was because his camera's viewfinder was a tiny black and white viewfinder, you know, about an inch square. It was very small, and the detail was, was not very good. So in any case, uh, what Cole did was he put together this just to go through a quick analysis of the blink sequence. And again, this was, this was found by Cole and, uh, just about a month before their Laughlin presentation. I was going to go through it right here at full speed, and then we're going to, get, we're going to go through it several more times. We're going to slow it down, and then we're going to blow it up. I guess I'd like to go ahead and tell you a little bit about myself and, and how I got involved um, in this odyssey. Uh, back in 1998, I was uh, working for Microsoft. I had recently sold my company, um, and in the course of that, I, I continued on with the company that purchased my company, and I was going to set up a Northwest office for us, so I went out to Microsoft and tried to, to uh, entice them to get some business to us. And while working for them out there uh, on contract, I came in. I came into contact with the Art Bell program, which, uh, as far as I knew, wasn't really, uh, I didn't know if it was available in the Midwest or not, but that's where I'm from, and I had never heard it before. So in any case, uh, just uh, popping through the AM stations one night, I happened to pick up the Art Bell program, and I, uh, it wasn't this program, the, the, Art, the uh, Robert Wraith program, but it was uh, you know, just interesting. So I continued to listen to it, and then Art went off the air for a period of time which is kind of disappointing to everybody, but uh, I continued to listen, and eventually he came back on, thankfully, <laughs> and Robert sent his fax in, and I happened to be listening uh, the night that that came in. Art said he'd received a very interesting fax. He was going to follow up on it, and then he subsequently had Art, uh, Robert on, which I listened to that, that broadcast and, and uh, the three subsequent broadcasts uh, and interviews of Dr. Reed himself on Art Bell in 1998. Toward the end of, or toward the beginning of 1999, I uh, left Microsoft and the company that I was working with and went back to the Midwest to kind of take it easy um, and just relax. Well, I tried to, you know, to find out what was going on, and there really wasn't much going on with Dr. Reed's case. Art Bell wasn't mentioning it, I really didn't hear anything else about it. And so I, around June of 1999, I emailed Jonathan uh, through the email us at odysseylink.net. I had no other way to get in a hold of him. And uh, hoping to, you know, get him to respond and let me know what was going on because I was still interested. Uh, didn't get a response back. Didn't really know why. And uh, I later found out that he had done a presentation in San Diego in March of 1999. And shortly after that presentation, when he arrived back in Canada, he was shot in the shoulder 